All right, welcome to another video on how to secure your cell financial. So, as usual, in the last couple dozen videos, this beginner guide to financial statement, the whole idea of this is to be able to read basic part of financial statement and basic part of accounting and make sense of that. Okay, so in this section, uh, in today's video, I'm gonna walk through this different financial statement as well as the overview and focus on the, the MDNA, which is the management discussion and analysis of financial conditions and results operations. So, to make this quick recap, uh, in this section, the SEC described that if you're able to read nutritional labels or read baseball, soccer, box score, you can learn to read basic part of financial statement. And if you can know and you can follow a recipe or apply for a loan, you can learn to read the basic part of accounting. And the basics are difficult. So in this section, we'll gain some understanding of how to read this basic part of financial statement and accounting, much like a CPA course, this cardiopul murder citations, where they teach you to do and perform the basic of that. However, it won't train you to be a cardiac doctor much like this section will train you to be a, an accountant, but it, can, but it can give you confidence when you're able to see a set of financial statements and make sense of it. So financial statement, after all, they show you the money uh, from the modern, from the Cuba Goody Jr. immortal lines from Jerry Maguire movie. It's like, show me the money. So that's what financial statement do. And there are four types of them. You have balance sheets that focus on what a company owns and what it owes at a fixed point in time. The income statement, how much money a company made and spent over a period of time. The cash flow is the exchange of money between the company and the outside world, as well as the statement of the shareholders which show is a change in interest of the shareholders over time. And this section only focuses on the first three financial statement. So balance sheets, after all, the TLDR, this is a snapshot of the company uh, assets, things that a company owns that have value, whether it is tangible or intangible, liabilities, obligation as well as the shareholders equity which is the leftover money that belongs to the shareholders after uh, if, if they decide to sell off all of their assets and pay off all of its liabilities so that leftover money belongs to the shareholders and generally this type of balance sheets are listed or generally not if they follow a formula which is the assets are equal to the liabilities and plus the shareholders equity and most of the time they follow the way of how this data is presented is following is this formula you have asset listed followed by the liabilities and the shareholders equity or we can see that at the top of that this presentation at the top of that the total amount of assets followed by the liabilities and the shareholders equity so generally the assets are listed based on how quickly they can be converted into cash so you have current assets if we take a look at the for example yahoo uh, uh 
apple here. So uh, if I take a look here at the balance sheet, okay, today it actually star in red numbers. Uh, so the total asset here, okay, is generally listed based on how quickly they can be converted into cash. So you have current assets and non-current assets, so assets that a company expects to convert into cash within a year. So for example, inventory, okay, uh, accounts receivable, uh, cash and cash equivalents, and other short-term investments. And when we look at the non-current assets, which are assets that a company will take longer than a year to convert into cash, I also look at things called fixed assets, which, uh, after all, these are assets that are not for sale. And then the total liabilities or in the li liabilities is generally listed based on their due date. So you have current liabilities, obligations that a company has to pay off within a year, accounts payable and a current expense, current debt and capital, current deferred liabilities, uh, and long-term liabilities like this. So on the shareholders equity, which are which show is the increase in money or the money that the owners has invested in the common stock of the company plus or minus uh, revenue or losses since inception and also some, some most companies often company redistribute their earnings as well. So for example, here they're retaining earnings uh, and gain not gain losses not affecting. Uh, they don't describe that. Uh, gain losses not affecting retained earnings. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you know, this is what generally speaking a balance sheet has. Then look at the income statement. Okay, uh, and before you jump into income statement, the balance sheet after all the this is a snapshot of the company assets, liabilities, and the shareholders' equity over a period of time, whether it's annually or quarterly. You can have other periods, but most of the time they use this. The income statement, okay, this show you if a company made or not profit, the bottom line of this. And you can think of this as a set of stairs that you start at the top with the total amount of revenue in this case, okay? And once you go down one step at a time, you make a deduction associated with that earning. So you start with the total amount of revenue, and then uh, you deduct things like merchandise returns, or discounts of money that a company does not expect to collect until you reach to the net revenue. And they call net because much like a fish net, whatever that left in once you pull in, or once you pull out, uh, the amount of fish that is inside of the net, uh, that's the similarity here. And once you deduct after the uh, you know the net revenue you deduct often uh, things like the cost of sales which is how much money a company uh, spend to produce that good and service something important uh, for example if you are a freelancer or a business consultant the cost of revenue is that how much costs you to produce the good and service. In this case, your service. Most of the time, in my case, is time. Most of the time is time, uh, internet, 
electricity, uh, as well as other costs associated relevant to uh, food, uh, rent, as well as uh, Most of the time, I will argue this is the only cost that I have, right? Uh, whether it's internet, electricity, water, food, rent, okay? As well as all the things that are relevant to, uh, to myself. So, okay, uh, so this is the, the cost of revenue. So once you deduct that from the net profit, the net uh, the net revenue as well as other costs uh, but broadly speaking you deduct the cost of revenue from the net profit you reach to the gross profit so they go they call gross because there are certain deductions that haven't done yet and Right below that, you deduct things like operating expense. So expense that are associated to run your business, you know, your day-to-day -day activity, uh, like marketing, administering salaries, research for new prototypes or improving new prototypes, as well as depreciation and amortization right research and development this is enter here selling general and administrative so once you deduct that you reach now to the operating income before interest and income taxes so when they talk about the interest uh, when they talk about here interest uh, Income interest or income expense, so for example, money that a company lent or loans that it took. Uh, and once you deduct this, okay, you reach now to the operating profit before income taxes. So you now the dog is the the tax that you own to the government, whether it is local, state federal and foreign and now you know uh, if your company actually made profit or not right again this is broadly speaking of this and then look at the cash flow statement which here report is the company inflow and outflow of cash and this is very important crucial not only for company but also for people because it is it is how they can use this cash to pay this expense or purchase assets. Pay this expense like rent, utility bills, uh, food if you are a, an individual, or uh, even taxes, okay? Not only for individual, but also for companies. Or purchase assets, uh, let's say a laptop, a keyboard, a mouse, a router, uh, furniture, and this cash flow statement reuse the information from the income statement and the balance sheets. And the bottom line of this show the net increase or decrease in cash flow. So generally, this is this cash flow statement review the cash flow from one of these activities the operating activities investing activities and financing activities so the operating activities what it does is to conciliate it, the total amount of cash that was used or perceived from operating activities with the net income uh, from the income statement and most common operating activities 
here uh, can be break down into operating assets and operating liabilities where the most common operating assets are accounts payable accounts receivable i mean inventory prepay expense uh, expense that company incur for good and service that will be provided uh, based on payments that ha that has been done for example premium insurance like health for medical coverage home vehicles to protect those belonging in the case of any potential accident life in the event of the policyholder's death liabilities like lawsuits disability that prevent you from working or long-term care such as nurse home health uh, nurse health care or home health care marketing rent software licensing maintenance contracts are another example of prepay expense intangible assets which is an, another common operating asset where here think we have patents exclusive rights to inventors so they can manufacture and distribute and sell that invention over a period of time and the most common interesting pattern uh, according to popular mechanic so 15 famous patterns that changed the world okay so the first is maglev i just want to mention a couple <clears throat> So maglev, all right. This electromagnetic inductive. Mm, sorry. Uh, as their patent name, uh, electromagnetic electromagnetic inductive systems and stabilizations. It's electromagnetic inductive, and this is it's electromagnetic electromagnetic inductive suspension and stabilization system for ground vehicles issued in 1969 here as well as the iphone or as a pen name called electronic device issued in 2007 the um, uh, gps okay Issued in 1974, this navigation system using satellites with passive ranging techniques. Crisp gene editing, this gene editing tool issued in 2014, as well as the uh, three, three, 3G, third generation wireless mobile telecommunications. And this was issue, this was issue in 2003, okay? And there is a term or a group of organizations that are under the umbrella term 3GPP, right, which is 3G, three generations partnership project. Three generation partnership project here, okay? The third generation policy project where now they develop, implement, and maintain mobile telecommunications protocol such as GSM, and it is related to gene uh, technologies or standards. UMT, this universal mobile telecommunication system. Okay, so the first was global system for mobile communications right which and it is related to g the umts the universal uh the universal mobile telecommunication systems and related 3g standards okay the lta the long-term evolution and it is related to 4g standards and recently the 5g in air and it is related 5G standard. So this is just for 
no curiosity, right? And keep looking at other intangible assets. We have trademark, which are exclusive right, or which are image, design, audio, text that uniquely identify this company from the competition. So, for example, Michael Buffer and his famous quote, let's get ready to rumble, all right? Oh, let's get ready to rumble! Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you get it. You get the idea. And also, copyrights, which are exclusive rights to uh, provide to creators of original work, so they can manufacture, distribute, and sell that invention over a period of time. So for example, Netflix, Spotify, Twitter, trademark, I mean, Goodwill, which is the brand recognition, reputation, and customer loyalty, the Goodwill. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, yeah, the goodwill, uh, as well as the trade secrets, which is confidential information that company use to gain competitive advantage over process formulas and customer list, as well as customer relationship. Another operating or another common operating assets is the investment in affiliates okay so the whole point of this is to a company decide to purchase significant amount of stakes on the another company to gain influence but not full control so the whole point of this is to earn an invest earn a return of investment uh, and or gain some competitive advantage for example joint ventures like post malone and crocs where this is a partnership between two or more companies or organizations uh, to undertake a specific business activities so for example crocs and post malone here so the one is to undertake a specific business activity the crux like this right where each part receives a share of the common uh, of the common uh, joint vendor uh, as well as equity investment such as Berkshire Hathaway Berkshire Berg, Berkshire Hathaway, Hathaway, okay, as well as Berkshire Hathaway, like this, uh, where the whole point of this equity investment is to invest in another company stocks uh, to rise it is voice uh, in to potentially rise in its voice and influence in the another company management decisions. Okay, so Berkshire Hathaway, which is a holding company that invests primarily in industry like energy, retail, uh, real estate, uh, SoftBank, which is a Japanese conglomerate, SoftBank, which is a Japanese conglomerate, SoftBank here, uh, SoftBank, which is a Japanese conglomerate that invests primarily in technology companies, Tokyo-based telecom company, uh, such so company that Tokyo or SoftBank has invested in companies like WeWork, uh, uh, Airbnb, uh, Uber, uh, 
Mm-hmm. So bag is headed by chair and CEO Masayoshi Son. Son has established himself as an assertive and confident player in the international tech scene. With about 100 billion to invest on companies developing the technology of the future, Song has room to explore a variety of new areas. According to the Economic Times, Song has strong opinions about the future of South Bank and has put forward a conception of a 300 year plan for the company. <laughs> Love it. With the end goal being to build the most valuable firm in the world. The key to Sun Futures investment in software vision fund dedicated to MA deals like those listed above. The list of acquisition continued to grow back in April 2017. Sun was behind the, the 5.5 billion venture into Didi Chongxing, the massive rice sharing company out of China. Describing the acquisition as a big bang. So went on to say that he believed the next Big Bang is going to be even bigger. To be ready for that, we need to set the foundation, and that foundation is Southern Vision Fund. Given the vast amount of capital that Sun already has at his disposal, some outsiders are wondering what he aims to do. Some analysts have concerned that some investment may flood capital into the tech sectors, prompting inflated valuation excessive lift of competitor and ultimately hindering the process of technological development. Yeah, yeah. It's inflating is a lot of the value of the company. Just because he's back with this huge amount of money. with interesting in everything from robotic to satellites, artificial intelligence to computerized enhancement for human bodies. The company has taken on aggressive investment campaign which not only ensure this activity with and support of many hot startups, but which also consistently brings SoftBank itself to the top of the many news feed. What exactly is this company and who is behind this? So this was founded in 1981 in Tokyo. Founding a telecommunication company, SoftBank, now has a hand in a number of different areas, including e-commerce, finance, broadband, marketing, and more. The company has a portfolio including SoftBank BB, Gun Ho Online Entertainment, EDC Frontier, and more. In recent years, it had gone on a spending spree buying up numerous smaller companies and initiating investment in many others. In July of 2016, for instance, SoftBank purchased UK best base chip manufacturing RM for 24 billion. What? 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 The chip manufacturing, the UK based chip manufacturing RM now belongs to SoftBank? Holy hell! <laughs> with an eye toward continuing to develop the Internet of Things. In 2017, SoftBank announced that it will buy two additional robotic companies from Alphabet. First, it bought up Jesus. <laughs> First, it bought up Boston Dynamics, the developer of the iconic Big Dog robot, and then it bought Shaft, a less well-known robot outfit. Shaft. Holy hell! Oh my god! Someone by Google's Boston Dynamics. Jesus! Alphabet in Google subsidiary. Google has finally found a buyer for Boston Dynamics. It is robotic arms. According to reports, Google has sold Boston Dynamics and Shaft. Uh, In Boston Dynamics. Holy hell! SoftBank acquires Boston Dynamics and Shaft, the Japanese silicon giant, 
pick up two of the most highly and innovative robotic companies in the world. Holy moly. Boson Dynamic, Big Dog and Handle, Shaft. And many more. Mm -hmm. Maya Masayoshi's son, chair and CEO of SoftBank. Holy moly. Masayoshi's son. Holy moly. Okay. Okay. Holy. Holy. Fuck. <laughs> Software Masayoshi's son said ChatGPT moved him to tear as AI, pushing him to ask, What is mankind? Uh, but this is from Fortune. Agriculture revolution, industrial revolution, information revolution, birth of superhuman, or the Ubermensch, as our very estimated and appreciated um, philosopher. The uh, Deutsch philosopher. Uh, I appreciate that Deutsch philosopher. And Jesus. Um, Nietzsche. Frederick Nietzsche. Okay, in any case. So that also was very, very illustrated. So. Holy moly. Oh my god. Damn, son. <laughs> so, holy shit. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay. Um, Jesus, this is the big player, man. This is the NBA, man. The big player. The, the financial NBA. The financial... The financial NBA, the big players, or the financial World Cup, the big players. Okay, so SoftBank buy in 2000. So SoftBank banned SoftBank by 2016. Jesus, SoftBank purchased the UK-based chip manufacturer ARM. For twenty-four billion dollars in two thousand six, in two thousand seventeen, SoftBank uh, bought, bought. Yeah, two thousand seventeen, SoftBank bought Boston Dynamics and Chef from Alphabet. Holy hell! Holy hell. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> um, so Alphabet is another uh, in equity investment where here in so so Alphabet so Alphabet here uh, English Alphabet <laughs> Yeah yeah very funny need to be more specific alphabet inc okay alphabet inc class a google stock price news so alphabet is a um, multinational holding company that invests much like the softbank primarily in technology companies okay uh, um, I'm just looking if, if Investopedia mentioned something about it. 
Investopedia. Yeah, invest, investing in Google Alphabet stock. Why Google became Alphabet? There is no dispute in that the fact that Google reinvented the way the world access information. The company has a whole host, host of apps and tools that many consumers use on a daily basis, from its search engine and Gmail to Google Drive, its file store service. Google to Alphabet. That the new entity will help the company take a long term view and improve the transparency and oversight of its actions. The new entity he wrote was an alphabet. <laughs> okay, point in 10. Alphabet. Alpha is an investment return of a merge mark, which we strive for. Alpha, what it means an investment. In terms, in a, it's a term using investment to describe an investment strategy, ability to beat the market. Um, or it is edge. Alpha is thus also often referred as to a excess return or the a normal rate of return. Um, interesting. So in finance, this is an investment strategy describing is the excess return or a normal rate return. Mm, so alpha bet. <laughs> and this is all camouflage. Jesus, this is all camouflage as the alphabet, the letters. But no, they're not. They're not doing that. The alpha bet. Alpha is the investment return over over benchmark, which we strive for. Not much change for investors in the reorganizations, according to the Security of and Exchange Commission feeling. Each Google share was swapped for one alphabet share. The chain had minimal consequence on the company bottom line on its direction. Then that then begs the question, why did Google change its name to Alphabet? When it is debuted on the stock market, Google became Wall Street Darlings. It is market capitalization increased by 27.2 billion, giving it market cap bigger than the four and general models on its very first day of trading. The number was based on the market assessment of the company's search business and turned out to be leg largely correct as Google pros in search power in the forging over the years. The arrival of social media brigade, however, blindsided Google, even as the company was coping with competitions from Meta, formerly Facebook, they disin disintermediation of the web search into mobile apps further erode Google's bottom lines. Google's forays into social media was pretty much a disaster. <laughs> of course. Perhaps the thinking was that Google could pioneer other industries, just as it started the search industry. But the absence of numbers relative to the cost of operational expenses of Google's new or acquired ventures made Wall Street nervous. The camp, uh, but the absence of number related to the cost of operating expense of Google's new acquires ventures made Wall Street nervous. The company chairs defend the moonshot to investors at the shareholders meeting in 2015. The move was intended to help ally the market's fears by streamlining operations and providing investors visibility into the operation of Alphabet new investors. Okay, is to okay is to provide more allegedly is to provide more transparency to investors. The company stock price jumped in record numbers after Chief Financial Officer Ruth Porat spoke about transparency in the company's 2018 earning calls. In Alphabet, we trust Alphabet. 
the reorganization as conglomerate, the move also leads in the glare of antitrust scrutiny on Alphabet. This is because each company within the Alphabet umbrella makes products for a different industry. So, but in any case, uh, so they create this, so Google create these companies to increase transparency to investors. It's to increase transparency, exactly, to improve, quote, quote, transparency and oversight. Okay. Holy moly. Mm, interesting. Okay, so you have Alphabet, this, uh, the Google parents, or the parents company, the parents company of Google that invest primarily in technology companies, including healthcare and anti aging. So, for example, Calico is one of them. Okay. Uh, Texas Pacific Groups, which is a private equity. Texas Pacific Group, right, which is a private equity that invests primarily in sectors like real estate, healthcare. So with that, okay, we're just talking about the most common operating assets. Uh, on the operating activities in a business. Uh, also, we have cash and cash equivalents. So, for example, money market funds, that the whole point of this is to earn fast liquidity because this fund or this market, this money market fund involves is the purchase or sell of large volume of very short term debt such as bank acceptance. So for example, here, money market funds. So for example, like bank acceptance, okay? Or bankers acceptance, short-term death, guaranteed by a commercial bank or issued by a commercial bank, bankers acceptance, certified of deposit, bank issuing savings certificate, with short-term maturity, it's a certified of deposit, commercial paper, unsecured short-term corporate debt, repurchase agreement, which is short-term government securities, and U.S. Treasury, which is short-term debt or short-term government debt. Okay, so the whole point of this money market funds is to get fast liquidity so these are not safe uh, so though not quite as safe as cash money market funds are extremely are considerably extremely low risk of investment returns so you can use it to park money temporarily before investing elsewhere or making an anticipated cash outlay they are not suitable for a long-term investment so if you want to park money huge amount of cash uh, you can rely on this money market funds okay okay interesting interesting very very interesting uh, and then keep looking now at the most common operating liabilities such as accounts payable so money that you own to your suppliers and vendors for example uh, raw materials office supplies uh, servers uh, usually in a 30 to 60 day defer revenue which are obligations that a company has to provide for good and service in the futures based on money that was collected. For example, Netflix 
or this subscription service Netflix Spotify also for example gift cards okay accrue expense which are expense that a company incur for good and service that has been received but not yet paid for such as administrating salaries rent utility bills taxes income taxes payable uh, money that a company owns to the government whether it's corporate taxes on the u.s usually this is something around 21 percent in corporate taxes uh, as well as uh, the withholding taxes if you're working in a dependent relationship or in a employer employee relationship uh, your employer deduct a certain amount of money from your gross salary to pay directly to the government and this is to permit to promote the pay as you earn tax system and fight tax evasions sell taxes where for example VAT is a tax imposed in the production at every stage of the production and distribution of goods and service the customer ultimately pay the full VAT and business along the supply chains remit that portion to the tax you also have federal tax, local tax, state tax, foreign tax, excise tax, which is a tax imposed on certain good and excise, 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 excise tax, like this, uh, excise tax, which is exactly excite excite tax how do you say this how do you pronounce this mm, interesting excise excise exactly excise tax or in spanish is impuestos para estirpar mm, so this is uh, a tool that the government has to control things, excise tax, uh, such as which is a tax imposed on certain goods or service, such as gasoline, guns, tobacco. Uh, yeah, such so as gasoline, yeah, like that. So, gasoline, alcohol, uh, tobacco, guns as well as GST which is the uh, good and service tax like this good and service tax which is a tax imposed on the value tax a value added tax leave a most good and service sold for domestic consumption so the dollar for good so it's a tax on the goods, it's a tax on the service, uh, and the total amount. So, oh my god. <laughs> so this is quite polemic, by the way, uh, because ultimately the customers are paying the, that, okay? Because ultimately customers are paying that. So critics of GST say it is a burden lower income earnings more than higher income earnings. Of course. Of course. Uh, and this is the tax added in place like Canada, Australia, and India. The good and service tax. Okay. Uh, Another common operating liability is short-term borrowings, 
uh, such as bank loans or line of credits, issuing corporate debt or bonds, as well as a outstanding invoice. So when you show your invoice to a lenders, the lender evaluate that and say, hey, yes, based on this value of my analysis and research, yeah, I'm going to uh, provide is this loan. Uh, also trade uh, trade credits uh, when you renegotiate is with your vendors and suppliers the repayment schedule or it is repayment schedule so also uh, uh, for example payroll advance notes payable which is an agreement between the borrower and the lender uh, Okay, uh, which is a borrower and a lender. Anyway. Uh, this is a... Uh, uh, the notes payable is an agreement between the borrower and the lender. Okay. Uh, It's an agreement between the borrower and the lender to outline uh, pays. It's an agreement between the borrower and the lender that outline the terms of condition of that loan. So, for example, company that asks loan for a bank, it generate a uh, it generate a notes payable. Outlying is the principal, the interest, the payment schedule, as well as other uh, topics. So when you, when a company asks now or goes to business, uh, such as private equity or venture capitalists, or that kind of thing, it also generates is a notes payable when a company issue bonds or when a government issue bonds, it generates is notes payable. Okay? Uh, also, if a company wants to ask uh, for a loan to individuals or small business, generate this notes payable. These suppliers uh, as well, you can generate notes payable to your suppliers. And then I also look at warranty obligations, which are obligations that a company has to fix or replace an effective product or a product that doesn't meet certain quality standards such as the manufacturing warranties, service, software, parts, vehicle. So once I look at these most common operating activities okay, and how the cash flow, what it does is to conciliate that by looking at the total amount of <clears throat> sorry uh, by looking at the net income from the income statement and adjust for any non-cash items items that affect the income statement without any cash involved so for example amortization and depreciation and stock based compensation and adjust for any cash that was used or perceived by other operating assets and liabilities. So then I look at the investing activities, which generally involve is the purchase or sale of long-term assets. Okay. Uh, that's right. That's right. Generally involve is the purchase. Uh, mm -hmm. generally involved is the purchase or sale of long-term assets such as property plan and equipment uh, investment intangible 
assets leasehold improvement and then I look at the financing activities which is focused on how a company raise funds and pay back to creditors or investors through through capital markets because this section is focused on the company's long-term liabilities in equity so generally involved is buying generally involved is raising funds from ben, from uh, investors or creditors repaying debt and payment of dividends so for example uh, except issuing equity is a form of financing for the company where now they uh, can by issuing common stocks raise funds from that so they give ownership uh, of their company issuing equity issuing death so they can issue is this short-term death financial instrument like demerters notes payable bonds repayment debt repurchasing stocks is another example of financial activity <clears throat> it, leasing which is the right to use of some good or some assets without taking ownership so for example when you rent a house when you go to an airbnb that's a leasing uh, <clears throat> uh, as well as uh, so these sections of the financial activities okay, uh, helps investors to see where the money came from okay you love to see where the money came from and how often this company is raising funds because if a company is constantly raising funds uh, from issuing equity or taking out of debt that might not be a good sign of investment however if the cash of this company comes from operations that might be a good sign of it and then I look at the read the footnotes, right? And here we they're packed with some information, which is very, very important, uh, that describe things to, to provide more context to this financial statement, such as accounting practice, account significant accounting policy and practice. So how this company is adhering to uh, the, for example, gap generally accepted accounting principle or the international uh, finance international financial reporting standard okay where the whole point of this uh, the last one the first one focus on u.s public company the second focus on international holding companies uh, where uh, the whole point of that is especially when you want to see financial stemming across the globe you want to make them transparent consistent and easily shareable around the globe income taxes which are money that company owns with the government now in this section you have in a more grain detail explanation uh, from local state federal foreign the pension plans or any other post-retirement programs were described is in detail about what are their strategy what is the company's strategy for those plans as well as if the fund is over or underfunded in the stock options which are uh, which are stocks provided by the employee to employees with the right but not the obligation to buy that at, a, at an agreed upon date and time 
and I agree upon date and price. So these are stock options, uh, they're, they're also called as equity invest, the equity derivatives because their value are based on an underlying assets. Okay, whether it's a benchmark or a currency, uh, natural resource or any other or any commodity so things like that so you have two type of options here in stock options puts and calls where puts are bets that a market will fall and calls are bets that a market will rise so okay with that basic understanding of this right then I look at the read the MD and A. And very important because in this section they discuss and provide more context about the management discussions and analysis of financial conditions and results in operations. <clears throat> yep, management conditions and results operations. So this provides more context to investors to see important trends and risk that the that have shaped the path of the company and reasonably likely sh to shape the company's future. So in other words, this helps investors to see the company through the eye of management providing more context for that so that'll be all for this video okay and then take care bye bye